morning. Uh, this is our daily devotion from Tabernacle Baptist Church. Our reading this morning is taken from Luke 18 and the first eight verses. Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and to not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me, for my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Here in this chapter, Jesus is talking about prayer. <clears throat> and in these first few verses, he's talking about persistent prayer. Here was a widow that might probably have been owed money. She was no doubt poor. There was no pensions then. Nevertheless, she was uh, powerless, with no legal rights, no money for a lawyer. But the one thing that she could do was to keep coming to the judge and bringing her case to him. Every time the court session was opened, she would be there asking for justice. She was persistent. And you know, that is how we should be when it comes to prayer. It would be easy, it would have been easy for her to have been come discouraged. After all, she was coming to an unjust judge. He wasn't on her side. The picture of the unjust judge is a picture of our fallen world where there is corruption, injustice, prejudice, wickedness. And you know, sometimes even in our own personal struggles, we feel like this widow, powerless to change things, to do anything. But as God's children, we can pray. And that should not be our last resort, but our first port of call. You know, God is still on the throne and as the hymn writer says, he will remember his own. My friend, how we need to pray in these uncertain times in which we live. Or that our government would call the people of this nation to pray, especially in the current situation we find ourselves in. When we come to God continually in prayer, it's not a sign of a lack of faith, but of persistent faith, just as this woman was persistent. And that is what God is looking for. In verse 8, he speaks about faith. There uh, it is mentioned there, and uh, there is a reference perhaps to a time to come, but nevertheless, will he find faith, he says in the earth. Will he find faith, my friend, today, tomorrow? And until he comes, for are we not all calling upon him for his help and support and comfort and guidance today? Do we have that faith and that trust in God despite the circumstances and the difficulties we may face? A faith that endures as illustrated by this story of the widow. You know, when we come to God, we must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, sincerely seek him. You know, to define godly faith means to trust, relying on God when looking to the future. As we look at many of the Old Testament saints, we see that they too had their struggles, opposition, persecution, hardships, but their faith in the midst of it all is a source of inspiration, I think, to each one of us. It's easy to get discouraged. 
but don't stop praying. Don't stop hoping and trusting. Continue to pray. In 1 Chronicles 16, 11, it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Persevere in prayer. You know, the poor widow, she had to struggle to get the judge's attention. We don't have to twist God's arm, for we are coming to a loving Heavenly Father, one who cares. And the Word of God tells us that he delights to hear the prayers of his children. His ear is open to our cry. Always pray, never give up. In verses 9 to 14, we have the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector or the publican. Again, Jesus is speaking to them about prayer. The Pharisee would have been considered a good man, honourable, righteous, a person of repute. The publican or tax collector, well, he was one and people like him uh, would have been despised, looked down upon especially among the Jews, for these uh, tax collectors were often corrupt and dishonest men and traitors to the Jewish cause. But as we look a little closer, <clears throat> we see that there are a few similarities with these two men. First of all, they were both sinners. What is sin? Well, it doesn't mean someone who is evil, wicked and bad. I'm told that in the Greek term translated sinner in the Bible, it carries the idea of a person who misses the mark, like an archer who misses the target. A sinner is missing the mark, God's mark. But really, when God speaks of sin, it's far worse than just missing the mark. Because really, we don't even try to aim, as it were, at God's target. We turn our backs on God and we're aiming anywhere and everywhere to find happiness and satisfaction and pleasure. Really, we're missing the whole point of life, and that goes for everyone. You see, it's about knowing God and coming into a right relationship with him. Jesus said, and this is life eternal, that you might know him that you might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Let's avail ourselves of this means provided for us through his son Jesus, that we can be restored to fellowship and harmony and communion with God the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. The other similarity we see is that they both believed in God. Now, I know that many people say that they believe in God, or a God, some higher power. I, I wonder what their response would be if you were to ask them if they believed in a loving God, an all-powerful, all-knowing God. Well, they may believe in a God as a, a force or a power, but not someone who would be personally involved in their lives. They don't talk to God, they don't pray, unless there's an emergency. They may like the Christmas story, but not the story of the cross. I wonder, where do you stand? The other thing they both did was to go to the temple to pray. A good habit. Jesus was often found in prayer. But here, the similarity ends. The Pharisee comes to God full of pride and self-righteousness. He was haughty. It was all about how good he was, but nothing about God's goodness. He talked about what he had done, but not of what God had done for him. And friends, I want to say that our own merits will never commend us to the favour of God. The Pharisee's prayer became personal and selfish. He had no care for others. In fact, he despised others, especially the publican. He never stopped 
to give thanks to God for his mercies. You know, pride is a sin that can hinder our prayers. Selfishness will hinder our prayers and doubt and unconfessed sin. Isaiah 59, we read those words, don't we? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Let's be careful how we come to God in prayer. The publican, on the other hand, came in humility. He came contrite, honest. He saw his condition before a holy God, and he confesses, I'm a sinner. He saw his need of God's mercy and forgiveness. I love the way we see that he puts God first. You know, the Pharisee put himself first and last and everywhere in between. But the publican cries, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God is first because he realised that no one else could meet his need. He saw how impure he was. He came that day with his guilt and his shame, asking for God's mercy. And my friend, if you feel that sense of sinfulness in your own heart today, well, don't wait to make yourself better, because you never will. But there is help in God through his Son and his death upon the cross to take away our sins. The scripture says he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Come as you are. You see, Jesus did it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Jesus said that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. He went home pardoned, forgiven, counted righteous before God. God will hear the prayer of the humble. You know, prayer is a necessity and it's a privilege. It is there at the throne of grace. God will open, as it were, those windows of heaven. There we will find fresh supplies of strength and comfort and joy and mercy. When we come to God with all our sorrows and cares and fears, don't worry that you may weary him. No, no. This is what I want to leave you with, this last verse in Philippians 4 and verses 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. God bless you. Amen.